This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about safety wiring. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is safety wiring, and there's actually two parts. First, we're going to talk about preparing fasteners to be safety wired, and then we're going to talk about the basics of safety wiring those fasteners. So first, we're talking about this jig, it's called a nut holder jig, and there's two approaches that this thing can do. The first is drilling a corner slot, and you can see with this tool, there's a tiny hole there. And the way it works is you take a nut uh, or bolt head, either one will work. Tighten this thing up so that it's held in position like that. And you cannot recommend highly enough that you use an Allen key to set that set screw as reasonably tight as you can make it. If there's any wobble, you're going to break your drill bit. And, and then you take a 16th inch or 1.6 millimeter drill and drill through one of the sides. And that is a very small drill bit. So you have to really take your time and you'll have a really bad time if you're trying to drill into hardened fasteners like grade five, grade eight. This is really for standard mild steel, aluminum, things like that. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and drill it for you because it's honestly terribly boring because you have to go so slowly or you'll break the bit, but you take your time, you use cutting oil, and eventually you end up with this little hole drilled through the corner. Now, that's the first approach. And like I said, this can be on the bolt side or the nut side. In this case, I've drilled the nut. The other option is drilling through the shank of the bolt and you use that with these, these jigs. So take your fastener, you screw it into the correct size hole and they're labeled. Uh, you can see on here that this is the metric set. And you, apparently I grabbed a non-metric bolt. This one is Imperial. Obviously I'm very well prepared for exactly this. There we go. And then you'll have marked where you need to drill it or if it doesn't matter to you terribly much, set it to where you need to set it to. Now, in order to make sure that this doesn't wobble as you're drilling it, you generally wanna put a, a capture nut on there and use that to tighten it against the frame, but you know that. Now, these jigs have the little side, which is the side you drill into, and they have the bigger side, which is receives the drill bit. And it's bigger because the bit can wander a tiny bit as you're drilling through, and this makes it so that it has some place to go. And that's pretty much it. Same as with the, the nut driller. Go slow use good drill bits. The one that comes with it, I have to say, not great. And I cannot recommend highly enough that you buy a pack of M35 cobalt bits or some other high-speed heat-treated hardened type drill bit. I use this set. And this, as you can see, it's cobalt M35. And they work pretty well. Um, you're still going to break one here or there. So I cannot recommend highly enough that one, you drill slower than you think you need to, and two, don't drill the only nut or bolt of something that you have. Have extras, because if the drill bit breaks off in the bolt, and this tiny, tiny drill bit breaks off in the bolt, or in the nut, it's, it's just such a pain in the butt. So that's my, my strong recommendation, is don't put all your eggs in that one basket of I only have this one nut and I need to drill it. 
don't do that. So that's roughly how to use these jigs to drill safety wire holes in them. So I'll set those aside. Also, I don't think this kit comes with an Allen key, but I had, I, I dragged up a spare and I keep it with the kit because like I said, any wobble in this setup and the bit breaks. So as you can see here, there is a hole drilled in the end of that. And you want to keep the hole close-ish to the nut. You don't want it to be sticking way out and, you know, drill a hole half an inch away. It kind of defeats the point. It'll get really loose. You want this to not allow it to back off very far. That's the idea. Now we're going to talk about actually installing that safety wire. So it comes in a spool like this. Now there's lots of wire that will fit in the safety wire holes. It's not an expensive product. Get real safety wire. This is stainless steel. It has some flex to it, so you're not likely to work hard in it as quickly. And baling wire or some other low buck wire is not going to have those properties, and you're asking for trouble there. Come on. There we go. So get yourself a length of safety wire. Now here we're going to wire these together. If it's on a motorcycle or race car or whatever needs this safety wiring, could be your normal car if you have a nut that likes to back off regularly. I've absolutely installed this in just an older car. You thread the safety wire through the thing and then kind of bend it in the direction that it's going to go. Now we are going to wrap this this way because this is pulling in the tightening direction. I actually oriented this nut specifically this way. Now if we were orienting it this way you're basically kind of pulling it in the loosened direction. So you always want to be cognizant of what direction you're pulling on the fastener. So we want this to go all the way here. And so the way we use these safety wire spinners, now the way these work is you pinch the wire in the jaws. You saw me use the the little wire cutter there, not great wire cutters. I mean, these, these are not high dollar tools, but they'll get the job done. And then this hook here can be captured by this mechanism here that slides up and down this shaft. And then we can pull this thing out, which twists them around, which makes the safety wire very tidy. So squeeze these handles together, you slide this thing down, and then you let go of the handles, and then they're held pinching in place. And then you pull, just holding this end cap, you pull this and it spins, making it tidy. And I'll show you how that works. It is delightful. So we're leaving the tails long because we'll need to fit them through this, this drilled hole that's in this nut. So we're going to pinch the safety wire right about there. So we squeeze it, we slide that mechanism, and it holds like that, okay? Then, now, of course, in real life, this would be on a vehicle, and so you have a lot more stuff to pull on, but it still works like this. So you pull that a few times. And you see it just spins up the safety wire and makes it nice, tidy, stiff, not flopping around. And then you just squeeze the handles a little bit. This thing is spring loaded and pops open. And there you go. Now, we thread one of these tails through the bolt hole like that. Let's fight it all the way through. Doing this chain together thing can be a little bit fussy because things get kinked but you make it happen. And then same thing again. Take the safety wire pliers, you pinch somewhere ahead of where it's connected, slide the thing, let go, and then pull on the tail spinner thing. 
And now you don't need to sp spiral this into oblivion. If you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, you will break it off. You know, you can't spin this thing down super tiny. I could probably pull it another couple times, but much more than that, and you're asking for trouble. So now you have these tails. I obviously pulled off a little bit too much out of the spool, but cut it off at the end of the spiral. Like that. And then you just take the jaws, spin it over so that you don't have a sharp ass thing cut in your hand. And you just tuck it in. And now this nut is really, really not gonna come off. And this one can't come off without shearing through that safety wire, which is basically impossible. Now, of course, in this demo setup through a piece of plywood, you could just unscrew the bolt. However, of course, in a situation where you're actually safety wiring things, either this would need to be a stud where this bolt can't be removed or safety wire the other side, whatever the situation is that you need to do to make sure that neither side can unscrew. This one can be single-sided. That is the advantage of the through shaft style of arrangement because you're just capturing the bolt to the nut and it can't unscrew. So even if the backside is unsecured, it still can't really go anywhere. And for race cars or race bikes, you'll get a lot of these things everywhere. Anywhere where that bolt falling off and with a race vehicle, every bolt should be necessary. Otherwise, why do you have that bolt there? You'll need to safety wire everything. And like I said, plenty of times you'll just find that there's a nut on an older vehicle that just keeps vibrating loose for whatever reason and you can't over torque it or you don't want to over torque it. This is a really, really good way to make sure that that bolt doesn't come undone. And when it comes time to come off, this stuff cuts off really easily. You just, I'm, I'm not going to fight it with this because like I said, like I showed you, these cutters are terrible. But you just clip that off, pull it out with needle nose pliers, and the, bolt, the nut is just as good as it was before. So that's it. So that's safety wiring. I have links in the description to safety wire pliers, safety wire, as well as the safety wire drilling kit, as well as the little kit of M35 drill bits. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.